black women are almost more than four times as likely to die of maternal mortality than white women in Texas. And so we wanted to figure out why. We realized that a lot of it had to do with implicit biases and the way that black women are treated in the healthcare system. And so looking at the way that black women are talked about in healthcare, or at least in regards to this issue, I noticed a lot of similarities between the rhetoric used there and then that used by French colonial authors in the 17 and 1800s. And so when I was in Dr. Kuti's class and learning about people from centuries ago who were really like staples in colonial literature, I kind of put the two together and saw a lot of connections between the ways that they were describing black women and the kinds of care that they needed to receive. And so the project that I did in her class hinged on like connecting that rhetoric and that language to some of those ideas that we still hold today or some people might still hold today about black women that put them at a greater risk of dying from maternal mortality. So I'll be going to Senegal to work on um, human rights and specifically with women's, children's and prisoners' rights. When I was planning to go on this trip, I thought that I was going to be looking at like unjust prison conditions. But when I got there, I learned that I would not be able to enter the prisons and that it probably wouldn't be like feasible for me to do that. And so that required some like kind of reflection on my part to decide, okay, like what do I want to do here for the next eight weeks? So um, I believe we spoke last time about ASB. We'd just gotten back from our alternative spring break to Austin looking at maternal mortality. So I ended up bringing that knowledge and that passion over into my Lowenstern experience and doing a research project on maternal mortality and maternal health care in Senegal. I found that the roots of maternal mortality or maternal morbidity, which is just like a near-death experience during or within 42 days after childbirth, was very different from the United States context, of course, because in the United States a lot of it is like racialized and so black women are at a significantly higher risk of maternal mortality than white women in the United States. So I was speaking to women who were called like the badge du corps or like conseillère familiale who volunteer their time to go to local clinics and talk about healthcare topics. So they talked about like giving birth, they talked about contraception, they talked about like nutrition for their infants. But all of these women were doing it without being paid by anyone. But I also got to see them be in like a really unique role in their community and be community leaders and have a sort of power. I've come back thinking that I definitely want to focus on Senegal and keep thinking about Senegal and researching more of the effects of not only colonialism, but like what happened before colonialism, like what was happening in Senegal before the entry of the French and before the entry of Europeans. And to go abroad and put yourself in a situation where you're using a different language and you're not accustomed to the practices and you are not sure about what's going to come your way each and every day, that is uncomfortable, but it's also one of the best opportunities to A, better understand yourself and understand how you respond to situations that are unexpected and the way that you react to changes in your schedule, like getting to Senegal and realizing that, okay, I guess I'm not researching prison conditions. Like, what am I doing? It gives you a better understanding of like how you as an individual react to change. And it also presents you with the opportunity to say, I am going to try to live my life in this way, in this completely different way for a little while and see what that adds to my life. I think being in Senegal has taught me that there's a lot of value in doing things that make you uncomfortable.